All right, so I promised a new series uh, about reselling, right? And so we're gonna get started with eBay and we're gonna start with approach just simplifying the idea because I think when people do reselling, a lot of times um, when they get started, they overcomplicate it. Um, I know myself, I absolutely, I feel like I just didn't know how to get started when I first got started. And I feel like I was kind of all over the place a little bit um, because I saw the things that other people were doing and mostly I had a lot of encouragement and influence from my uncle who had a successful store already. And so I kind of tried to take some things that he told me and just kind of tried to interweave my own thoughts and stuff. But ultimately what you got to do is you got to, you got to approach it simplistically. It really is not as complicated as you think, but you have to start the First step is just accept that you're gonna spend money and you're not gonna make any. That's right, you're gonna spend money and you're not gonna make any. So why are you starting a business? Because ultimately you will be able to make money. And for the most part, I think this is more of a side hustle than it is a business, but a lot of people have turned it into successful businesses. I know several people, my uncle, um, it was my lifeblood, it was my bread and butter for a long time. Um, uh, gear, he, uh, <laughs> Gary Vee, he's somebody who does, uh, he's done incredible success with um, eBay and lots of other people that I know. There's a couple of people in Texas that um, really great at it and they support their family on eBay. Okay, so the reality is you can do it, but I do believe there's bigger and better opportunities out there once you get enough cash flow. So I believe this is a way to generate cash flow that doesn't take a whole lot of work it takes consistency. That's what it takes is consistency. It doesn't take a lot of work. It takes a lot of consistency. Okay, so like I said, uh, from the beginning, you just wanna accept that you're not gonna make any money. You're not, and it sucks, and you wanna be like frustrated and bothered and be like, how could I start a business and not make any money? But you're not. You're gonna spend money, and you're gonna hope that you'll slowly get to that point of breaking even. Now, if you are someone who already has, um, I've got a cousin, that is in uh, the Dallas area. And her and her husband are uh, awesome. And um, they had a business. They had a store at a, uh, what is it? Like a flea market. They had a flea market shop. And during the pandemic, it closed down. And so they're like, well, what can we do? And they talked to me and I told them, I was like, you can absolutely um, do this online. And they're like, well, you know, we know you've done eBay for a long time, so can we do eBay and do you think this will work? And I was like, of course it'll work. There's, because of the things that they had, I do believe that they had other opportunities as well, getting into Etsy and getting into Posh. And she looked into it and they ultimately didn't like those. They really liked eBay. Um, they felt like it was just more consistent. It was easier to use. It was a, a more user-friendly platform and they understood the fees. Even though some of the fees they felt were excessive at times, they ultimately, could wrap their mind around it. And they're like, I can, I can rationalize this because I know I'm gonna keep selling. Um, so they were willing to keep paying fees and knowing that they were gonna make money. But see, so they already had a influx of inventory that they didn't have to worry about. See, now if you're getting started and you don't have that, like my man Gary Vee would say, and like I've said countless times, make it simple, don't get nuts. Everybody's got a smartphone in their pocket, right? Okay, so you got a smartphone in your pocket. Um, when I got started, I didn't have smartphones yet. Um, I got started in 2001. Uh, they didn't have smartphones yet. But what you do is you start simple. You go to yard sales, you go to thrift stores, flea markets. You start with cheap things that you can turn for big profit. Now, what I mean by big profit is I mean percentage wise, right? If your percentage wise is big, then although you're not making lots of money, you're not losing much on your investment. So your turnaround is big, right? So if your great thing is like coffee mugs, coffee mugs, bar glasses, things like that. I mean, you can get these things at Goodwills, um, Salvation Armies, flea markets, thrift stores. You can get them for like 99 cents, sometimes even cheaper. Um, sometimes a dollar fifty. And every now and then my uncle was really good. I was never really that good at haggling at a thrift store or flea market. I don't know why I would, you know, it just, I guess because in my own mentality, I saw it as silly. So when I would try to approach it, I didn't approach it with the same 
you know, oh yeah, I can talk this guy down because I kind of felt like they had already priced it. Now, when they had things that weren't priced, I was like, hey, this doesn't have a tag on it and I would make them an offer. You know, I felt confident doing that. My uncle felt like everything was negotiable. So he was always real good at be like, he'd fill his basket with stuff and then he'd walk up there and be like, or he'd fill his arms. He's like, I got all this stuff. I'll give you 20 bucks for everything. And um, he just felt really good about that. And he, like I said, he was able to talk a lot of people down. Um, sometimes he didn't, but anyways, even if you don't talk people down, you're talking about like spending 99 cents on a coffee mug that ultimately, if you look these coffee mugs up on your smartphone, you check them out on eBay, you check them out on Etsy, you check them. What you do on eBay, what you have to do is you actually have to do accurate comps. You can't just say, oh, well, there's one listed for $35. How long has it been listed? Has it ever sold? Has anybody ever bought this mug for $35? Um, so what you do is you look up the coffee mug on eBay and then off to the left-hand side, there's gonna be a whole list, this drop-down menu, and you go to um, completed listings. Completed listings. So you check the box for completed listings. When you check the box for completed listings, it's gonna only have auctions or listings that have ended. Now, if that, listing ended and it sold, it will be green. If that listed ended and it didn't sell, it will be red. Now, if it is green, that's the price value that it sold for. So that's good news because now you have something to compare it to, right? If you can see that this mug you can buy for 99 cents, it sold twice for $24, but somebody else has it listed for 35. I wouldn't bet that you're gonna get 35 for it. How long has that item been listed? So there's different aspects that you can look at to consider, hey, I know it sold for $24 twice, so I'm gonna accept that 24 is a reasonable amount. I'm gonna spend 99 cents. I can ship it for, let's say seven bucks. It's a coffee mug. It's a coffee mug, you wanna make sure it has plenty of padding, it doesn't break. Some coffee mugs are heavy. You might be able to ship it for six, five. Um, but if it's a heavy mug, you might it might be closer to seven or eight. Um, so you wanna take into that consideration. And there's gonna be weird places, like there's certain uh, states or cities that are kind of out in the middle of nowhere um, that for whatever reason, the shipping rates, I mean, for, for that reason, I suppose, um, Jersey is one for one re weird reason that Jersey, shipping to Jersey is more expensive. And that's just cost of doing business. So if you ship this particular item to Jersey, it's gonna cost you more than eight bucks. But what's the likeliness out of all 50 states that you ship it to Jersey? So you just take that loss when it happens, that extra dollar fifty loss, you know, it's no big deal. It's just cost of doing business. Ultimately, you're looking at buying a mug, shipping for seven bucks, buying it for a dollar. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> So you're talking about eight dollars and you can sell it for 24 that's you know three times profit three times you know you selling it for three times what it's what you bought it for or what the expense to sell it's going to be so at that point you're looking at this being a decent investment right now you're saying, well, I only made $24 and I'm only walking away with $16. That isn't much money. No, it's not. It's not at all. But if you can go buy something else like a piece of fitness equipment or, you know, a, a, an awesome exotic collectible, something like that. I mean, those things you're going to spend $100 and you can flip them for $500 or $400 or a piece of musical equipment or something like that. Um, you can flip a lot of things for bigger prices, but I'm saying if you're concerned about the amount of money that you're gonna put in versus how much you can get back, start with something simple like 99 cents. You can buy things for 99 cents and flip them for 25 bucks. That's a pretty good turnaround. Then you take that, you do that, you go spend $10, right? You spend $10, you've got 10 items you can list. You list all 10 of those items, that's 250 bucks that you've made if they all sell. Now they're not gonna all sell. I would say a 20% sales turnaround is pretty awesome. If you turn around 20%, that's great. So if you list 10 and you sell two, well, you spent $10, you made 50, spent 16 to ship it, 
you still got $34 out of it. So you take that $34 and now you can reinvest. And now you can say, well, I wanna do, I don't, I'm gonna keep doing mugs. These, these are, you know, they're kind of a hassle. They're glass, you wanna make sure they're, they're safe. You know what I'm saying? That's another expense is making sure you have bubble wrap, uh, making sure you have pay, packing paper. Now you can get those things in bulk. You can literally order um, supplies on eBay of all places. But the, the thing is, is there's other ways to get those supplies as well. But like I said, let's focus on starting simple and we're gonna go into shipping and packing and things like that in another episode of this series. But like I said, keeping it simple, just start with what you feel like you can afford. If you feel like you can go out and spend 50 bucks, spend 50 bucks. But if you wanna start like you're nervous, you're scared. First of all, I'd wash that out. I'd get over that. If you're gonna be in business and you're gonna have a side hustle, stop being scared and just dive in already. You being scared and you being nervous, you're not gonna get past. You're gonna choose to get past. It's not like, oh, I'm nervous and eventually there's gonna be this moment where there's no more nerves. No, 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 no. No, you're just gonna have to like boss up already and be like, I want to be in the game, so I'm in the game. That's simple. That's, that is that simple. You wanna be in the game, get in the game. And so, like I said, you rationalize with your husband, you rationalize with your wife, you're like trying to figure out this, we don't know if this is gonna work, it's gonna cost us some money, that's fine, that's fair. Like I said, you're trying to rationalize the upside gain versus what you're putting in, start small, start with 10 bucks, go get you 10 glasses, 10 mugs, 10 whatever, 10, you know, Beanie Babies haven't really been a thing since the early 2000s, um, You'd have to look into them. I don't know if they're still a thing, but you can get those for like 99 cents too. They're just just look for things like that that you know you can get for 50 cents, 99 cents. You spent $10. You spent more than $10 washing your car or getting a Big Mac. I mean, seriously, take $10. Don't go to get Big Mac. Don't wash your car by hand. You know, save $10 this week and you can start your eBay business for 10 bucks. Then, like I said, if you sell two of those 10 items, then you can invest in something bigger. Okay, what can I get that's bigger? We'll get into that in the next episode. I want y'all to stay tuned. I really do. Stay tuned. Stay locked in. Be sure you subscribe. Subscribe and ding that bell. You don't want to miss out. I got a lot coming at you, and I really want to help y'all learn, grow, and develop. And I want to help you grow this side hustle enough that you can truly make it viable and get that cash flow coming in. So that way you can take that and flip it into your next venture. Because that's ultimately where I'm at. I literally am heading back down to Texas this week. <laughs> and I've got a lot of inventory and storage in Texas. And I'm gonna bring that up here to Wyoming. I'm gonna try to liquidate all that, which is going to hopefully fund the other things that we're really working on. We're really working on developing some other businesses and stuff, but we've got all this, I mean, we've got, <sighs> we got, we got a, like upwards of almost a, almost $100,000 worth of inventory in uh, Texas. So we're hoping that we can turn and burn that inventory um, and get back into that for just a moment. So that way I can fund the other things that we're gonna do. And I wanna help show you how to do the same thing. A lot of people get worried, like how am I gonna you know, go into this business or that business? How can I uh, you know, pay for licenses? How can I pay for permits? How can I pay for my logo? How can I pay for my website? How can I pay for these things? eBay's a great side hustle that can, can make you money. And you can turn it into a bigger business if you want, or you can use it as an opportunity to fund your big next venture. So. Y'all stay tuned. Don't miss out. Let's keep learning and growing together. If y'all got comments, y'all got ideas, leave them below. Let's do this. It's your boy and I'm out.